What's up, guys? How you doing? Howdy. James, we got uh, Devon and Keziah today. Um, were you able to talk about how each of those two have progressed during their time on campus, and specifically these last two weeks? Yeah, you know, Keziah, obviously very talented, been excited about him, uh, you know, really since we signed him. Um, and thought he was going to be more of in a backup rotational ro ro role this year and, and felt like he was going to really grow as the season went on. Obviously, he's been forced into a different scenario now, um, and I thought, I thought he's playing pretty well. So, so did the defensive coaches. So um, I think as he continues to gain more experience and more confidence, he's a twitchy guy you know, that's got the size that really you want at that position. Um, it's hard to find, and um, you know, we've been really pleased with him. And Devon, you know, obviously a, a year older, um, you know, has obviously been in the program a little bit longer. He's got a little bit better understanding of how and why we do things. Uh, but another really talented guy, both out of Maryland, uh, McDonough High School, and uh, DeMatha. Uh, I think both of them have a bright future. But obviously, the scenario has changed from the beginning of the year to now, what, what their role and our expectations are going to be of them. Yeah, for us, you know, obviously the region is, is really important. And whether you're hiring coaches that have connections in a region, whether it may be New Jersey or whether it's Maryland uh, or Virginia like Dex, th those things are important because relationships, right? Um, so a bunch of high school coaches that, that I've known for a long time. You know, AK is a perfect example. I've known his high school coach for 20 years. Deej has known his high school coach for 20 years. Um, and there's, there's trust there. Um, and I think it's like anything else, right? You send your kid there and he's treated well and fairly and gets a great education and, and gets better at football, then it's a win-win for everybody. So uh, obviously spending eight years in that state and uh, you know, when I was in that state, I recruited um, you know, good portions of the state. So I got good familiarity um, and that, that goes a long ways. And then even, even kind of when I was at other places, we still kept kind of going back there and recruiting. So, a lot of good friendships, a lot of good relationships, and those things are important on the recruiting trail. Sticking with the Maryland team, uh, Curtis Jacobs, can you talk about how he's progressed? Because it looks from the outside looking in like he's getting better and better. And do you see his role expanding at all uh, as his career goes along, maybe shifting him to other positions? Yeah, I think he's been on a very similar um, path that a lot of our guys have, have gone through where they start out to the field, maybe as a freshman, as a backup, and you're kind of rotating in then take that as a starting job. Then, de the, then depending on your body, how your body transforms, possibly moving in to the Will linebacker or moving into the Mike linebacker, uh, you know, depending on your control of the defense and understanding of the scheme. So I think he's got the flexibility to do that. I think in a perfect world, that's what you'd like to recruit, kind of three field backers that grow into uh, guys that can play into the box from an experience and from a confidence standpoint. Uh, with the way that people are, are running offenses right now with the, with the spread scheme and all the speed on the field, you know, uh, a lot of people are only playing with two linebackers. We're one of the few programs that are playing with three linebackers on the field. James, also going off of, uh, you know, the Maryland team, I know with, uh, you know, Debbie Yell mentioned that, you know, keeping you and uh, Mike around at Maryland as well, um, you guys both, I mean, brought a lot to the program. Said, and uh, you know, what are, what are some of the thoughts of you know just your time at Maryland with Mike and uh, you know just building that I guess that pipeline down there too. Well, you think about it too. Mike Gundy was on that staff too. I mean, a lot a lot of guys came out of that staff. Um, you know, where I was fortunate to be there. Learned a ton uh, from Debbie Yao uh, as the athletic director at the time. She's been like a mentor to me kind of throughout my career. Uh, somebody I, I call, uh, you know, when, when I have questions. Um, obviously, Ralph Regan learned, learned a ton from my time with him and the success. We had a, we had a bunch of success there. Um, you know, so, yeah, I think, you know, the, the time that I spent there on and off for eight years uh, as a receiver coach was kind of my first big time job. And then, um, you know, then as the recruiting coordinator and then coming back as the offensive coordinator, um, you know, that lot of time there. My one daughter was born there. 
Um, still have a lot of friends and relationships. I, I said this the other day, my wife worked on campus in the, in the admissions office. Um, so, you know, that was, a, that was a big growth time, you know, in, in my career, uh, both personally and professionally. So, um, very appreciative of the time that we had there. You know, went to a BCS Orange Bowl, um, you know, did, did a bunch of cool stuff. Yeah, but probably not. Uh, probably not for this setting. I used to. We used to go. I used to go jogging with Mike, um, you know, at like lunchtime, and Mike. Mike used to tell me he was going to be the next head coach at Oklahoma State, and uh, before you know it, he was, and has been there for a long time and been very successful. And then obviously, you know, your such as connection there as well. Um, so, um, you know, Mike. Mike's a, Mike's a, you know, done a really good job. Is an interesting guy. He's got a great background and has done a really nice job at Oklahoma State. So, I love to see him every year when I go to the convention. James, why do you preach one and all? I mean, why do you think it's important to instill that message in your team? Well, obviously, you know, for consistency, it's something that's that's been good to us, um, you know, over my career, uh, all the way back to Vanderbilt and and now at Penn State. Um, and that's that's the challenge, right? Is getting young people or people in general to be as consistent as you possibly can. Um, you're constantly hearing, hearing um, voices and noise from the outside about this game is bigger than this game. And, and I think that's where you have to be careful. You get on an emotional roller coaster. So we just we try to keep it as consistent as we can. It's always about us. Um, and then you know try to, try to make sure that we do everything we possibly can through our week. Uh, of our process of getting ready in terms of how we game plan and how we how we practice from an installation standpoint so that we're peaking at the right time both physically and emotionally but that's the challenge uh, it's no different on the football field everybody out here can play some guys can make the play one out of five times the other guys can make it three out of five times and hopefully your best players can do it four out of five times so um, you know that that's what you're trying to do is just trying to create as much consistency throughout your program as you possibly can. That's James, good. James, you've talked about uh, the screen game being a part of your running game. Does the number of decisions that Sean has to make in those situations factor into that as well? Of he's making 56 individual decisions during game, or are those throws not as much of a workload on him? Yeah, I, I would I would say those aren't aren't major workload. I mean, it's it's pretty much numbers. Like if, if we got three guys out there and they got two, throw it. Like my, my psychology degree from East Stroudsburg, I, I can do that one. Um, so I, I don't think that one, th those are overly challenging. Obviously, there's a bunch of other stuff on his plate as well that he has to manage specifically from a protection standpoint. Um, and then all obviously recognizing coverage, whether it's, you know, whether it's too high, one high, whether it's man or zone, whatever it may be. But that's also where the motions help. Um, you know, uh, there are some people that are motioning and then playing, you know, zone coverage, um, but but that's a huge man zone indicator for you. But yeah, it's 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 challenging. But I do think the perimeter screens are are important. Um, you know, an important part of our offense, whether it's bubbles or whether it's smoke screens or whatever it may be. I got to spend. Go ahead. I, I got to spend a week with a men's hockey program and a week with a basketball program, and there is just an astronomical amount of stuff that goes on with the program that never sees the light of day in terms of the narratives that shape a season and the things that go on that you have to deal with relationships and everything. It just never gets out there. You are the arbiter of truth for your program, ostensibly. How do you decide what 10% goes through that microphone versus the 90% that stays inside the building? Yeah, I think that's the challenge. And it's the challenge for me because I'm a person that wants to be as transparent as possible, but then you're constantly thinking about if I say this and it comes off the wrong way, is that going to upset a kid in the locker room? You know, sometimes you guys will ask me a question about how a player played, and I want to answer your question, but I also want to be respectful of the kid, his parents, and, and those types of things. Um, it may be about, you know, it may be other tough questions that you guys are asking me, and I want to be. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm saying it in a way that's going to represent the university and the administration the right way, how they, how they want information presented. So I think that's the hard part when you're in this position is you want to be as truthful and transparent as you possibly can, but you also want to be respectful of all these groups that you work with and for, and I think that's the challenge, right? Um, 
you know, it's, it's funny because people say, well, you become the head football coach of Penn State, you're the boss. Well, you're not really the boss, you just work for different people now, right? Um, so I think that's, that's the challenge. Um, and you guys do a great job and you're smart and you ask, you ask tough questions, but I'm constantly trying to balance all those, all those things in, in my mind, so. James, the uh, initial college football playoff rankings came out and my question to you would be, do you think that that current system in place is fair for every team in the country? And if not, what would you offer up a suggestion to make it better? No, it's, it's not fair. Um, life is not fair. Um, but you know, I, I've, I've brought up some things in the past that, that I believe in. A lot of the people have been here for a while. I've, I've heard this multiple times. But I, but I think the first thing you have to do, if, if you're not going to have a true playoff system, um, the first thing you have to do is make sure everybody is, is playing under the same model. How, how can you have some conferences that play FCS opponents and other conferences that don't? How can you have some conferences that are playing nine conference games and others playing eight? Um, it's, it's very, very challenging in terms of if you get a bunch of people in the room, and we all have biases, right? Try to get a bunch of people in the room and they're trying to decide who are the best players. Um, some of it is data, but some of it is just your personal preference, right? You know, um, but how can you do that when not everybody's playing the same number of games or in, in, in a similar, in a similar uh, situation? So I think that's the first thing needs to do. Everybody needs to play eight games. Everybody needs to play nine games, conference game, or everybody needs to play 10 games. Whatever it is, just make it consistent across the board. I think that's one of the first things you have to do. And then the same thing, standardize. We're either all playing a 1AA or FCS opponent, or no one is. Um, but it just needs to be consistent. I think that's the first thing you need to do to allow people to sit in a room and decide who are the, the best football teams in college football. If not, there's, there's always going to be a complaint. But I also say, right, like in basketball, I mean, what, what are we at, 64 teams in a tournament? And, and still, at that point, who complains? 65, 66, 67. So there's always going to be complaints. Um, but I, I do think that has to happen um, for it to even make, make any sense for people. James, what do you do when your identity to what you want to be in a season doesn't work out, either through injury or guys that aren't, aren't working at it to make that work? What do you do in those moments when you want to be one thing and you can't be? So how do you, how do you navigate that? Well, I think that's always the case, right? I, I don't think in any situation you have this vision of what you want to be before the year starts in any walk of life, let, let alone football. And it, it turns out exactly as that, that picture, um, as, you, as you thought it would be. You have to adjust and you have to navigate um, and you have to, you have to be flexible. And whether that is scheme or whether that is personnel, um, at the end of the day, no one, no one cares. You just got to find a way to get it done and you got to adjust and you have to plan for some of these things. So that's the challenge. There's a bunch of moving parts. Um, but I think, you, I, think, I, I think that's where it starts is you can't sit here and say, okay, I got this vision and it better fit this vision exactly how I saw it. And if not, it's not going to work. Um, you, you constantly have to be adjusting and, and making changes and being flexible uh, and willing to change. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Have a great day.